the error, and that's what I think I, it must be bigger. Yeah, I can't prove that it's as small as it might be 0.3. Uh, that gives an idea of how sloppy our understanding of protons is compared to that dual precision that we understand electrons, all right? So that gives us some idea of why it is I feel so uncomfortable talking all the time about what we don't know much about, and nobody asked me about the stuff we do know everything about. So. Therefore, I'm forcing upon you a lecture on the things that we think we know something about. Okay, so that's our job. Now the question is, what am I going to do? I'm going to tell you what the theory is. I'm going to tell you what it looks like, what we do to make the calculation, just what the thing is, because otherwise, how are you going to understand what world picture, in other words, this thing is. And it is a world picture because it describes all the phenomena, except for radioactivity and gravity, in the world. <laughs> That's a lot of phenomena. It's possible even it might explain and should explain, if everything is thoroughly understood, the laughter of the audience when you make a dumb remark. Now, if I'm going to explain this theory, the question is, are you going to understand it? Will you understand uh, the theory? When I tell you first that the first time we really thoroughly explain it to our own physics students is when they're in the third year graduate, in the graduate physics, then you think the answer is going to be no. And that's correct. You will not understand. <laughs> but this business about not understanding is a very serious one that we have between the scientists and an audience. And I want to be at work with you, because I want to tell you something. The students do not understand it either. And that's because the professor doesn't understand it. <laughs> Which is not a joke, but a very interesting I think. And I would like to explain it. My task, really, as a, to explain all this, is to convince you not to turn away because it appears incomprehensible. That's what it takes four years of us to do to the student, is to get him so he doesn't run away because it looks crazy. The thing that's exciting about this is that nature is strange as it can be in this sense, that the rules that are going to be obeyed, that I'm going to tell you about, by which this stuff is analyzed, by which we understand nature, the rules of the checkers, yeah, are so screwy you can't believe them. Nevertheless, if you follow out the consequences and see what they do, sure enough, all the ordinary phenomena that happen, you can understand. That's hard to do, because you have to know how to count big numbers, and do lots of arithmetic and so forth, to see how it is that these rules really explain common experience. That will be more difficult for you to understand. What is not difficult is this. Well, that's difficult enough, yes, because it's so strange. But it's no more difficult for you than for the students, and no less difficult. I know sometimes I hear people coming to my lecture to say, oh, I'm going to come to your lecture, although I know I'm not going to understand anything. It makes me feel bad. Or when they come up afterwards, they say, oh, I enjoyed your lecture. It was lots of fun, but I didn't understand anything you said. <laughs> I really am trying to make myself clear. So I would like to discuss this with you. Will you please keep coming in spite of the fact that you don't understand it? because I don't understand it either. And the fun of it is that we, it's so mysterious, okay? That's the fun of it. So this business about understanding requires just a few words. And so I'm going to say something about the relationship, and I would hope we get some of your cooperation. Sometimes you don't understand because, say, the language is, the fellow comes from America and he talks too fast. That's my fault, and I apologize. Uh, I hope it's all right. That's a kind of trivial difficulty. Relatively. Next kind of not understanding is because you perhaps use new words. That's an accident that comes because I'm working technically and I use the words all the, every day and I forget that everybody doesn't know what they mean and I have to be very careful. Again, my job. And then there's a kind of saying that you don't understand it, meaning I don't believe it, it's too crazy, it's the kind of thing I just, I'm not going to accept it. Uh, well, the other possible, well, this kind, I hope 
you'll come along with me. You'll have to accept it. Because it's the way nature works. If you want to know the way nature works, we looked at it carefully. Look at it. That's the way it looks. You don't like it? Go somewhere else. <laughs> to another universe where the rules are simpler. <laughs> Philosophically more pleasing, more psychologically easy. I can't help it, okay? If I'm going to tell you honestly what the world looks like to, to the to human beings who have struggled as hard as they can to understand it, I can only tell you what it looks like, and I cannot make it any simple. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to simplify it. Eh? I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going to make tell you it's something like a ball bearing on a spring. It isn't. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what it really is like, and if you don't like it, that's too bad, okay? There's also the possibility that you don't understand because you're con you get a bit confused and you're sure that you must have misinterpreted what I said or uh, something like that and you get turned off and that's of course a difficulty. Let me assure you that most of the time you did interpret correctly what I said because if it does, I'm gonna, it's going to be so shocking the way nature actually works that you're not going to believe that either. I faked it. I'm not telling you the full story that for the students I have another way of explaining it or something like that. It is not true. I'm going to be honest, okay? So I'm going to ask you to try not to get turned off and not to be afraid. Relax and enjoy it. Realize that nobody understands it. <laughs> now, what the hell are my students learning for four years if nobody understands it? <laughs> I'm going to explain. And I'm going to explain by a kind of an example. Uh, I like to, to take the Mayan Indians. They had a writing system, and we know some of the things they wrote were astronomical things. And they had a scheme for predicting th many things in the sky, eclipses and so on. And let's take the example of when Venus, which was important to them because it represented evil of some sort, was a morning star and when it was an evening star. So they could predict ahead of time whether this bad influence was going to be in the morning or in the evening. And so they discovered that if they waited that this cycle of morning, evening, morning, evening, morning, evening, five of those occupied just exactly the same time as eight times a certain period that was important to them, 365 days. It's not exactly a year, and they knew the difference, but they still counted in 365 day intervals, which they called a tune. So they said that five of these cycles is eight tunes. Then they... Uh, discovered, of course, very quickly that if they did this five-cycle bit for eight tunes ten times, they were off by about six days. And so they had a rule for shifting the, making corrections as they went along, and thus had a very good way to predict when Venus was coming up. Okay. Now let's uh, look at this thing from a point of view. Suppose that the professors, the priests in those days, who wrote this stuff and taught their students these rules, were giving a lecture to try to explain what they did in order to make these wonderful predictions about Venus. Then, if the fellow was any good at exposition and really knew what he was doing, he would say, what we're doing is we're counting the days, just like you're putting nuts in a pot. And we keep on counting Five, eight, uh, 365 nuts and then another 365 and another 365 and another 365. Guys, what a lot of work. And we get all finished. We say, that's five of these periods. Now they understood what he said. That's easy. They did not know a quick and tricky way to add 365 times eight. I'm sorry, I said five times. I meant eight times. Uh, the students were learning in the meantime the laws of arithmetic, something which is to us now, because we have public and free edu uh, general education, almost everybody has to struggle through and learn how to add numbers by a tricky scheme of writing them in place system and making carryings and so on, so that a, if you buy wine for $4.15 and your meal is $2.87 or vice versa, it costs 7.02, and the girl who does 